Imagine you have a list of entries and you are mapping over these entries. And for every entry, you have a link that is wrapping it. Looks like that. I'm sorry for the flashbang. And this is a very, very simple and very common use case in web development. But there is a problem with that approach. You see that this uses the link component. And while everybody would suggest you to do so, I would say don't. At least not in this case. To showcase you why, we need to run a build. When the build is done, we need to start it. The reason for that is very simple. We don't want the localhost version, we want the build version. Because in the build version, we have prefetching of links activated. So if we go into our example, and we look into the developer tools, and go into network tab, and now we start scrolling, we see that there are a lot of requests here made. So every time a new thing or a new entry gets into the viewport, it gets fetched or better said, prefetched. And that is a feature of the Next.js link component. And in that use case here, it is very, very bad because it costs you a lot of money because there is a lot of work done here. And let's say you don't have 50 entries like I have here. Let's say you have 200, 2000, 10,000. Imagine a user scrolls through all of these and there's a prefetch made every time there's a new entry in the user's viewport. That's not a great idea. And that's why I would suggest you to go in here and say prefetch false. Then we start a new build. This build now is finished. So we say start and visit our web page. Go to the top, refresh the site, go to the network tab, scroll down, nothing happens. There's no prefetch made because now it's disabled. And this is what we want here because the list of entries and the list of links showing on this page is just too big. So when should we use prefetch true? Or actually it's not true, it's null. At least that's the default value here. So when should we just stick to that if we don't have too many links on the site? And I would suggest you set prefetch to false when you don't need it. But as I mentioned, there's null as a default value. And you may wonder why is it called null? And that's actually true, of course. And the difference here is that null is only prefetching full static routes and dynamic routes to the next loading segment. So if you say true, this is ignored and everything is prefetched. But prefetch is not the only interesting thing about Next.js link component. There's actually more. And one thing the Next.js link component is pretty good is of course <laughs> navigating, but it also has some more capabilities. So everybody of you might know the standard A tag, but I wouldn't suggest you to use that because with the A tag, we have full page refreshes and this leads to state loosement. And that's something we just don't want. And there's also a feature called code splitting built into Next.js generally. And the link component is built in with that code splitting. The A component is not. So during navigation with the link component that we see here, Next.js makes use of this code splitting and not the whole route is rendered when some segments are already rendered. With the A tag, everything is rendered and you don't want that. So as I already mentioned, the link component is good at one thing and that is navigating. But how is the link component actually working? It's basically just a A tag. It's wrapped, wrapped by the link tag from Next.js with extra functionality that I already have mentioned. But that also means that we can add things like class names here and they get attached to the underlying A element, but not only class name, also things like target, which we know this strange underscore blank. If you don't know what that's doing, that's just doing that if you click the link, it's opened in a new tab at your web browser. So you can use all the tricks of the A tag as well. So you can say point point and this will redirect you to the parent element, for example. If you want to route to something that is more dynamic, you can go in here and make an object. And in this object, you can use those template literals and you can just make use of variables here like that, for example. So that's how you can get dynamic routing to work. Let's go a step further and say we want to have query parameters. So we go in with an href, but this href is now a object again. And in this object, an object again. And now Curse AI is doing the rest for me. And we can specify a path name in this object. And we can specify a query, which will be an object as well with the query name. So that's how to get things like that running. But now it gets interesting because, okay, prefetch was awesome and all these small tricks were awesome. But there's a little bit more. So let's get rid of all that things here and let's go back to a simple link. And two things we can add here as well. We can add scroll to something, for example, true or false, where true is default and false is not default. So let's implement a small link here on the contact page, directing you to contact page. And let's set scroll to false. Let's put this down because that makes definitely more sense. And you will see why now, because we go in here and we say, contact and nothing happens. 
I mean, we're redacting to the same page, but scroll is disabled. Defaultly, scroll is set to true. So like that. And if we click contact now, we get on the top of the page. And then there's replace. And replace is interesting. We set it to true. Defaultly, it's set to false. And let's change the href to just the home page and just use this link. And we get to the home page, as you can see here. Different is that we can't go back. There is no going back because what replace is doing is it is replacing the history state, the current history state of the browser. So if navigating, there is no back because what was current is now current and replaced. And that's all you need to know about the link component. If you want to read more, click down in the description. There you get to the docs. Thank you for watching and take a look at my Next.js ISR video. This is a crazy technique to make your web app so much faster.